Oh my gosh, I honestly missed filming for you guys. Alrighty. Hello you guys. Wow, I feel like it's been so long since we have gotten a chance to sit down and talk. Finally, after many weeks, I have had a day to myself to just sleep in, relax, have a day to myself. We're restarting this because I forgot to plug the mic in. It's night shift brain over here. You know, we're doing our best. In this video, I'm super excited to film because this month I'm officially about to hit my one year as a nurse in pediatric oncology, hematology. That's crazy how fast a year has gone by. There's so much to reflect on and chat about. So I wanted to film this video to kind of talk about what I've learned as my first year as a new grad nurse and answer your guys' questions. You have been along this entire entire journey from my very first undergrad to going back to school as a nurse and then getting my dream job working in this incredible field. We're just going to chat about it all today. We're going to answer some questions I just posted on Instagram like an hour ago, so we'll see if I have some things to touch on. I got hired last January, but I didn't start until February in pediatric hematology, oncology, and bone marrow transplant. I work at my dream hospital with some amazing people and I work night shift right now. First question, advice for those just starting their journey. If I could go back and tell myself anything. I just remember being so nervous and overwhelmed. I had actually taken six months off from the day I graduated to the day I started my job. And in between I was coaching, getting certifications and things like that. So I think I was so nervous because I felt like I was behind in some way. I was a nursing student through COVID and I had very, very minimal clinical days. Like I counted the number of actual days of clinical, not like SIM days or other things like that. And I think I had 20 days in a hospital or a care setting, which is absolutely insane. So going into a hospital and a program that was not specifically for new grads, I felt very overwhelmed. I only felt confident like taking vitals. I remember like the first day that I did hands-on stuff and I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. I literally can only take vital signs. I felt so unconfident and it's weird how I was able to dig up these past experiences and things that I learned. I think honestly, I was more ready to just absorb from the nurses around me than I was like pulling from stuff I actually learned in nursing school. I naturally am a pretty observant person and I was so driven to be able to be there and fit in and do a good job. That I think that really helps me skill wise. Everyone says you just learn on the floor and it's so true. You learn on the floor. My other piece of advice that I've told some of my friends going through this journey is not to settle for a job that isn't the right fit. Nursing is in a really special unique place right now where there is such a high demand. So if you want to work in labor delivery, if you want to work in pediatrics and people are like, oh, that's really hard or that's more competitive. Don't let that stop you. And I know it's scary to graduate nursing school and be like, I have no money to my name and so much debt and you just want to start working. But I promise you it's going to be a real bummer if you have a job that you're going to be really unhappy in if you had this dream specialty that you knew you would have loved. And kind of going off of that one, Lexi wants to know if I see myself staying in my current nursing job long term. And the answer to that is hopefully yes. Obviously, never say never. I mean, I don't know what could happen in five or 10 years. I think what's interesting about nursing specifically at a hospital is that there is a lot of ebb and flow. People are coming, people are going. There's good people that are there, there's bad people. As of now, I am so lucky to work on my dream floor at my dream hospital that I look at the nurses that have been there for over 20 years and I'm like, I wanna be like you. I wanna have that knowledge and foundation that you have. And so, especially in pediatric hematology, oncology, it's a very specialized floor. I just wanna absorb everything that there is to learn there and I hopefully will be there for a very long time. So as of now, yes, I wanna stay. Was it everything that you dreamed for? Of course it wasn't gonna be all sunshine and rainbows. Yes, I knew it was gonna be hard signing up. Like I tell everyone that I work in PT mock and like the initial reaction is like, oh my God, I, that is so sad. I don't know how you do that. There are parts of my job that are absolutely devastating that I sit and think about and they're heavy. I think I'm lucky enough to have a lot of positive outlets that hopefully someone will ask about later or I will just talk about because I definitely wanna talk about how I've like grown in my emotional journey through the past year. It is what I expected with the exception that it is really like physically and emotionally exhausting. Like there are times where you just come home and you've given everything and you are so exhausted that you really truly need like that recovery day. There's a reason why hospital nurses don't work like five twelves because it's so physically and emotionally taxing. So I think that's difficult. I think it's very difficult to balance coaching right now and nursing. Just the flipping aspect of it is particularly challenging. But in terms of finding moments of joy with these kids, I find it every single day. and. 
I am so lucky to be able to like walk into work and see a last name that's assigned to me and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have this patient. And that's something that's super unique about Peds Hemonc that I knew would be a thing. And I definitely experience that every day. It's so wonderful to just like walk in and have a patient that you've known for months and still be a part of their journey and catch up with them. And then someone asked what my favorite part is. And that's honestly my favorite part. Like the other day I had one of my teenage patients. She was so excited to have me as her nurse and I was so excited to have her. And so I think that's my favorite part is like that special bond that's developed. I haven't really gotten to experience this since I've only been a nurse for a year, but being able to see these kids come back in and visit after their clinic appointment, I think is something that's really special because you just get to see how far they've come and celebrate their journey because you were walking with them. Next question, do you regret not choosing another specialty? I have absolutely no regrets. I kind of felt called to oncology world and I just feel like cancer has affected my life since I was a very small child, like in so many different aspects. I wouldn't say I'm a perfect PT monk nurse by any means, but it's a really good challenge for me emotionally. I feel like I can be a really happy peppy person and over this past year, I've learned to like really be good at reading a room and really slow down my pace, walk carefully so that I am respectful of each unique journey and what each patient and family situation needs. So every room is just a little bit different. Sometimes I'm bringing in humor. Sometimes I'm bringing in a little bit of stillness and calmness. Sometimes I am cleaning a space that maybe is just like overwhelmingly messy because the family simply cannot, they're at max capacity. So I just do my little bits to help bring a little sense of calmness into their routine, which kind of going into that, or what are some areas that you had to grow in over the past year? I'm gonna talk about from the very beginning, like some of the things that were the most challenging for me. I felt like I could take vital signs. I could do the eyes and nose. Charting was particularly difficult as well as anything to do with the pump and tubing and hanging lines. In pediatric oncology, all of our kids have central lines, especially with our bone marrow transplant kids. We have extensive pump setups, compatibility issues. Like there's a lot of, on the go thinking rather than maybe like a typical med surge floor, which you're gonna have like maybe fewer IV meds. It's not uncommon at all for our whole IV pole to have two different brains, maybe even three different brains with maxed out channels everywhere. And then we have TPN and lipids hanging and compatibility with that and all of the timing of meds. That was a lot to learn. Funny now watching myself like program meds on the pump because I know exactly where to go on that Alaris pump and I just do it and I used to be so overwhelmed. It used to take me forever. The questions that I used to ask my preceptor, like it asks you to select a syringe type. And I used to think it like really, really mattered which syringe type I selected. And I'd be looking at the name of which syringe I was using. All these little things that you start to realize what things are really critical for you to pay attention to and which things are not so critical. I feel like my confidence in the pump and tubing has grown a lot. One of the things that I did like right before I was off orientation is I just made my preceptor and I go into the med room and I just wanted her to quiz me on all of the lines. And she's like, okay, if you're hanging a PCA, which tubing would you grab? If you're doing blood, which tubing? And that was so helpful for me. I've definitely grown in my communication with families. The other area that I have grown and I still hope to continue to grow in is like my communication with other care team providers. I felt like when I was new, it was really hard to communicate. Obviously the big stuff is obvious, but smaller things I was like, do I bother them? Do I not? We are so lucky on my floor that we have an entire provider team sitting in a room waiting to answer our questions. So it's so easy. Sometimes we send pages, but more often than not, we are able to have a conversation, which is something that I love about our floor because I've also been able to learn a lot that way. Charting, I've gotten a lot better at. I was super lucky to have a really wonderful relationship with all of my preceptors and I was really honest. Like I kept asking for them to give me really critical feedback because I only had six months on orientation and I wanted to just lock it down. I didn't want people to look at my note or my charting and be like, why did she write that? Some of the things that I would do like when I'd have free time is I'd just turn to another nurse and I'd be like, so what's your pet peeve that people put in their note? That's like a waste of time. And she was like, I hate when people are like monitoring her eyes and nose. Like, of course, that's my job. I'm gonna do my job. That's something that should be like a given on our floor. So little things like that, I just was like, okay, I'm aware of the pet peeves of these more senior nurses and I wanna avoid those mistakes because it's gonna make me look like I know a little bit more of what I'm doing. I think just being really receptive to everything around you has helped me grow a ton. And obviously like learning where dumb things are, like where do we keep extra toilet paper? All of these things has started to become a little bit more second nature to me. Oh, the other thing, oh my God, 
I've thought about this so many times. It used to like blow my mind that a call light could go off and it wasn't your own kid or you hear a pump beeping, it's not your patient and nurses would just like be able to walk in the room and go fix it. And I was like, how do you do that? Like, how do you know what you should do? And someone else, everyone has a slightly different flow. And now I like get it. So it's so true that the confidence and the learning, it all comes in time. And I felt like once I was three and a half, four months into my orientation, it just, I hit this point where it clicked. The basic stuff clicked and I started to be able to take on this like higher power information where the first month I was on orientation, I kept having to ask the same questions multiple times because I just wanted to be sure. What helped me become the most confident in my knowledge and critical thinking? Always asking questions. It's always asking that double check because it just validated things in my brain and allowed me to be confident that one, I wasn't gonna make a mistake and two, just making everything a, a conversation has helped my my learning personally because I feel like I'm a conversationalist and that's how I learn or like by example if another nurse knows how to do something or I hear that they're doing something I always ask can I watch because it's super helpful to learn oh my goodness there's so many good questions how much does nursing school actually prepare you for a job it gives you some things that are super helpful that people who've been away from nursing school they haven't had like drilled into them. So I wouldn't say like nursing school is a waste of time by any means. Something that I kind of didn't realize that I would use so much in my job as a PT monk nurse is my knowledge of electrolytes, especially with our bone marrow transplant kids or any of our kids with like tumor lysis syndrome. We focus on labs all the time. All of our kids are getting daily labs basically. One of the things that I took away from nursing school, a little bit of like therapeutic communication, obviously that's just like practiced throughout your nursing journey, but definitely the escalation protocol when things start to to feel unsafe. That's something that you talk about a lot in nursing school and that's been really helpful. I take a lot more of my, my inner morals and values and that's been more helpful in my growth as a nurse than what I learned in 15 months in nursing school in an accelerated program, like if I'm being honest. And I even pull like a lot of my human physiology knowledge and knowledge of medical terms into my practice more than stuff that was covered in nursing school. But that's just my personal opinion. Have you been asked to precept, be charged, etc. yet? And how do you feel about doing so? I never thought I would. I thought I was like the most baby nurse on the floor because my nursing school experience was the shortest of anyone I was hired with. And I was hired like the newest for a while. And then of course we have like all these other cohorts now. And sure enough, I have been a preceptor three different times, all for short occurrences, but it has been very interesting, challenging and rewarding at the same time. Like I obviously love teaching. I feel like it brings out the coaching side of me. I think it's really hard to teach when you've had less than a year of experience but I know that this is the nature of nursing and we are in such dire need of staffing that I'm like okay I'm gonna do my part you're here to help so I'm gonna teach you as much as I can in our short time together and I think what's really difficult about being a preceptor is your patient load may not be fit for you to be precepting and that can be extremely difficult because you have this one plan of how you'd like to teach best but you also are caring for your patients at the same time and so your mind is like constantly being pulled in different directions. I have not been asked to be a charge nurse and I have made it pretty, like I've been pretty vocal about not wanting to be a charge nurse anytime soon. I'm just not ready for that. One day when I'm in my thirties, like in 10 years, maybe I'll explore that path. But as of now, I have no desire to do that. Did your program do a preceptorship? If so, do you feel like you learned a lot? Yes, my program was not a part of a residency program. If you didn't know, my program just developed their own education program because our floor is so specialized. I loved not being in a residency program program once I was in my program because it was very specialized to me. I did take some like pediatric acute care classes with other nurses on different floors. I had like a set of three of them I think that I went to. So I did have education days that were more like new grad focused, but I didn't have to do like any year long program. I was really lucky to have a positive experience. I know a lot of nurses have only had like maybe 12 weeks of preceptorship and I had a full six months, which I feel incredibly grateful for. Personally, I needed the full six months. Some of my coworkers who started at the same same time, they were like, I was so ready to be on my own. I did not want the six months. So everyone's really different. I felt like really comforted by having that support and having an assigned person that I could go ask all my questions to without bothering them. How did you overcome anxiety about feeling like you weren't prepared enough starting off? It's a really good question. I felt so safe with my preceptors that I initially did not have a ton of pre-shift anxiety. I think I started to become a little bit more anxious as I was like becoming a little bit more in charge of things 
things. Honestly, I knew who I could trust and I really quickly learned on my floor the people who I was safe to go ask questions to and the people that I needed to kind of like give some space to because my energy like didn't mesh with their energy. It's like some days that are worse than others. I think on night shift, if I have had a long stretch that I'm off for and then the first night back is really hard for me because I just don't know where the floor is at. I don't know who my patients are gonna be for the entire stretch. So I just try to keep with my routine. I try to work out the day that I work that night and then I try to get good sleep. I try to pack food that I really want to eat that sounds good and healthy to me. I try to like really take care of myself. Uh, I justify that by, hey, I'm making more on night shift and that night shift differential covers some of the things that you need to be able to do in your life so that you can handle the extra stress that night shift brings. So if that means that you're gonna like buy your coffee out once, you know, maybe you just need to get that done. If that means you need to have groceries delivered, you know, whatever it means for people, I typically am very careful with spending my money, but sometimes that just means that I need to buy things to make my life a little bit easier, okay? Like if I didn't have time to meal prep, I'm gonna go to Trader Joe's and I'm gonna buy a delicious salad that's already made for me and I can just toss in my lunch because it's simply like all I can handle for that week. So I try to give myself a lot of grace and I think that has helped with some of the stress and anxiety and I've been really fortunate to have wonderful friends and family that have been very, very supportive throughout this journey and that's helped me a lot because I've been able to vent and process and share my feelings about, yeah, like sometimes I just don't want to go into work because it's scary and stressful or if I know I'm gonna have a patient that has really high acuity, like it is hard for me now without a preceptor to like hope it's all gonna work out. For the most part, it always does. There are times where it's scary, so I pull on a lot of other things that I've learned throughout my life. In ski racing, standing at the top of a mountain and pushing yourself down an icy slope is scary, and so I focus on like my breathing and I focus on trusting myself and being able to work on the task at hand without letting my emotions get in the way. There's like a lot of dissociation in nursing for me personally that I found, and maybe that's not super healthy, but that is how I've gotten through some very difficult situations because Sometimes you just are there to do your job and a lot of that processing and emotional stuff needs to be done outside of work. So I try to separate the two. That was a really long answer, but it's kind of a complicated question, I think. What are your favorite and not so favorite parts of your job? Also pay transparency if that's okay. Nurses in Oregon make really good money. You can look it up. So I'm not personally gonna talk about how much I make, but um, I work at a union hospital. So you can just look up how much union nurses make an hour in Oregon. And that is how much I make. Good parts, the connections with family. Last November I had interviewed for a job in the OR and I thought that's the job that I wanted because it would put me on day shift and have a more normal schedule. And I'm so glad that I do not work as an OR nurse, bless all of them who work so hard and stand for many hours, but I love interacting with my patients and I want them to be awake and alert and I, my favorite type of patient is not the sedated and intubated patient like a PICU nurse maybe would enjoy. I love the patient interaction and just getting super close with families and getting to like catch up with them. My not so favorite part of the job is definitely dealing with how unfair life can be. These kids have done absolutely nothing in their life to deserve having to go through cancer and the treatment that comes with that. Having to follow their journeys and process the good, the bad, and the ugly. Very difficult at times. It weighs on me heavy. A part of me has found a lot of gratitude in my own life because of it. I think it makes it difficult to hear petty problems. Of course, I still even have petty problems. I am always bounced back and always able to reflect every single day that I am so grateful to be healthy. I am so grateful to be able to go to work and care for these wonderful kids and their families. So I think that has been difficult, but inspiring and motivating too. Like there are times in my life where I'm so tired, bouncing between all four of my jobs that I'm juggling right now. And I just think of them and their strength and how much they would love to be able to be on the mountain skiing or how they are able to wake up every day and continue to fight this terrible, terrible disease and deal with all the horrible side effects that go along with cancer treatment and they still are able to like make me laugh or smile and watch a show or get up and take a lap around the unit. So I just think about them and a lot of like my own personal living is for them. So I'm able to like get through difficult things because I watch these kids do it too. It makes me emotional. Sometimes I'm a little more of an emotional person now that I'm on night shift because my hormones are like this and my circadian rhythms like this and I never know when to sleep or eat. So sometimes you just cry it out. Happy tears and sad tears.
We have a couple more questions. I had a lot of questions about tips and advice that I would give to someone as a new grad. One thing that I use a ton in pediatrics, I'm gonna go get it and show it to you. It's on my badge. And we're gonna spend this to talk about some of the things that have also like really helped me on night shift. So some of the things, here's my lovely badge reel and things. This light, incredible. I'm gonna link this down below. I have like a link to all of my favorite nursing stuff that I use all the time. This is a wonderful light. It's dying on me, but it has this mode and it also has like a red mode that's softer. I use this on night shift all the time. It's so helpful in the dark. I have a bunch of other doodads on here. This clip on Sharpie has saved my life so many times. I'm able to label tubing. I'm able to label all of my lines to keep it all organized. People have always like thanked me for organizing my pumps and labeling everything. So I can never label enough and the Sharpie helps me do that. I have this little light that looks like this. It actually came with this guy. And this one I used to check pupils really fast or like look in patients' mouths and it's just like a good little spotlight. I have have this little mini scissors goes like this and then they then they become little scissors it's super cute and little and small I give a lot of zyprexa on our floor and the zyprexa packets you can't pop the pills out so i actually have to like cut open the packaging so that's really helpful mr piggy the kids are obsessed with mr piggy no matter the age they will come and they will grab my badge reel and they'll press mr piggy it's just like a great little bonding experience and toy for them to play with i have this little pop it this is 75 percent for me and my own calming and 25 percent for the kids this was like in a goodie bag for the kids for Halloween. And then there was a bunch of extras. I have some other things on my badge reel that are super helpful, particularly this little pals. I'm gonna see if it can zoom in. This pals sheet. This talks about like all of the different cardiac arrest factors, things to explore. This is from 2021, so it's a little dated, but it works. And it talks about all of the meds, the doses per kilogram, jewels that you would shock, different things like that that are just good to know and have on you. But what I use even more than that is this pediatric, vital signs sheet it looks like this there's two sides this side has like normal weights and then this is a side that I actually use because this has all of the vitals in pediatrics there is a large range of vitals and if you don't understand what's normal the computer is not gonna figure it out and tell you they're gonna say that blood pressure is so low but for a baby it is so normal so that's something that I always refer to because in the middle of the night I'm just like uh, I can't remember how old you are what's normal so I just look at this and it's very helpful. I also have like a little pain score. So sometimes I can just whip that out too. So those are some things that are really helpful that I bring. In terms of other things that help me get through a shift, hydration. Where is my Odwalla? I finally splurged and got myself an Odwalla water bottle, which is just so incredible because I love that this mouthpiece is covered. It just seems like so clean. That's the other thing that I've learned as a nurse the past year is I am such a germaphobe now. If I wasn't already like a clean person before, I am washing my hands every single time I come home from anything. I am like not touching my face. I am determined not to get sick simply because I obviously cannot go to work and take care of immunocompromised patients if I'm sick. So I've been really good about trying to take care of me and my body so that I can come to work and be healthy. I bring an absurd amount of drinks. I always have my 40 ounce ice water with me and then I I usually have like a kombucha and then I also have a coffee. In terms of like my sleep and my sanctuary, a couple things that I'm gonna grab to show you that I love so much. These are some of my go-to essentials that help me sleep. I love this Electro Fan Evo. This is a little sound machine that I turn on when I sleep, helps me so much. This is like world's best eye mask. If you haven't already heard about this, it's like $18 on Amazon. Basically it has like little sockets for your eyes. This thing is pitch black dark. I have not had to get blackout curtains. This works so well. I can tighten it and, and adjust it to my head. I love this fuzzy blanket. It just is so cozy and I need to make my bed my sanctuary. So I sleep with this every night and then I also sleep, this is so bad, my mom's gonna murder me when she hears this, but I sleep with my electric heating pad. It turns off after two hours. It helps me fall asleep really fast and it just brings me a lot of comfort because I come home and I'm freezing because my circadian rhythm is like off. The other thing that I love is my lunchbox. It is this huge Hydro Flask lunchbox. I can fit so much in here. I finally had to get a bigger one because I was packing too many snacks, but I love options. Now that we talked about some of my favorites. We're gonna answer the last couple questions. Near miss and how I learned from it. One that like first came to my mind, this was very early on in my training. There's a lot of different fluids that we use for our kids and they have different volumes of potassium chloride usually added. Like there's NS, there's D5 NS, D5 half NS, D5 half NS plus 20 KCL. There's like a bajillion and the bags look very similar. 
similar. So it's not always like obvious which one it is. And so my preceptor was like, hey, we need another fluid bag. Can you go get it? I'm like, of course, come back with the bag. And she's like, that's not it. You know, it had potassium chloride. I was like, oh my God, so embarrassing go back, grab another bag. She's like, dude, that's still not it. I had grabbed like 20 KCL and I think the patient had was getting like 10. And so it was just a really wonderful learning lesson to me that it's important to like, if you're unsure, either right there in the med room, go look up on the MAR exactly what fluids they are getting and then read it on the bag before you even bring it into the patient's room and get it all contaminated or just scan it in, in the med room and make sure that it comes up on the MAR and it's all correct. So you're not having like an error and wasting bags of fluid. So that was like one time where I was like, all right, lesson learned. This is something I really wanted to talk about. Are you able to come home and leave work there or is it hard not to think about them? One thing that's helped me a lot, even though it's been stressful, has been coaching. Like I am so present on the mountain because my mind is problem solving there, dealing with a huge ski team and coordinating all of those things that it's, a really great distraction, especially after some really hard shifts this past month. I have been able to like find my sanctuary there and process some heavy stuff simply by like being in nature. So that's one thing that's been really helpful. Daily expressing gratitude and finding the joy in these little things because these kids would do anything to sleep in their own bed. And I may have an exhausting, hard, stressful, annoying day at work, but I am able to come home and sleep in my own bed. And that's such a gift. I'm able to unwind that way. And I know I need this like certain level of self care. I have established like a lot of routine things that I like to do. I do like a nice long cleansing shower at the end of my stretch. And I just like listen to good music and I just let it go. As the water runs over me, I like let everything cleanse down the drain. And of course, I still think about things. I think it's so normal. I think I let myself think about things and patients on the drive to work. And sometimes I have certain songs that like remind me of certain patients and I'll listen to them. And I just try to take those emotions and motivate me to like do a good job for those patients who may no longer be with us. I think that's like my time that I allow myself to like think about things is on the drive to and from work. And then once I get home, like I'm home and I'm doing other things and I'm filling my time like listening to an audiobook or a podcast or my favorite YouTubers. And that's just been like cleansing because I need that break. Some other like little things that have been really helpful. I don't check, like we have an online schedule of when everyone's working and I don't really check when I work with people or who I'm working with that night. I think for some people that can help them because they're comforted that they're working with like their best friend or their you know work wife, but it can also be harmful because you're like, oh, I'm not really excited that I have to work with so-and-so. And so I just have found like a healthy balance that I show up to work and I accept what is given to me and I deal with it then, but there's no need to like waste my personal time freaking out about it because there is nothing that I can do when I'm at home. And that's part of the gift of nursing is like, when I'm at work, I work. When I'm at home, there's literally nothing more I can do. My charting is done. I have no access to the charting system. I have tried really hard to like not check my work emails at home. That has been something that's a little bit difficult throughout the start of my journey. I was getting like bereavement emails when I'd be at Costco and then I'm processing the death of my patient in like the produce aisle, like that's unhealthy. So a lot of like boundary setting has just been very healthy for me. Being involved in the things that I'm happy to be involved in and then boundary setting. And then of course, building relationships with your coworkers and knowing when you need to call someone and have a discussion about it so you can talk about it and move on. Because if you never talk about it with a therapist or a friend or a coworker, it's just gonna eat you alive. So those are some healthy ways. And then the last thing that I've done is I have a journal and something that I have worked on ever since I started really is we have a special book at our work where patients who have passed away, we write their names in. I wanted to start like my own version of that book for patients that like I specifically have cared for. And so I put that in the book because I want to remember them. And I have like some hopes and dreams of like ways to honor their life. Um, so when I have more time to do that, I want to be able to honor their life in some way that's meaningful to me. And then I also have a section of that same book of meaningful moments in nursing that I want to remember because there are so many moments 
every day that I experience that are happy, sad, funny, heartbreaking that I don't ever want to forget. And as much as you become like a little immune decondition to some of these emotions because it's your job and you see it every day you still want to process it and remember it it was too hard for me to journal after a shift it's like too emotionally draining to say everything so i just try to write like a one to two sentence bullet point of what i experienced and like the meaningfulness behind it like just with enough clues that i myself personally reading it in like five years would be drawn back into that moment i think i'm gonna end it there that was kind of like the main question that i wanted to answer because i think that's such a big part of your your first year as a nurse is like learning to deal with everything that you see because you are really quickly thrown into what really is experienced by the world very happy with my decision to become a nurse it's so me it's funny to think back at senior year at university of oregon me who was so lost and didn't know what to do with my life and i thought i would do medical device sales and now i'm like dude you were so meant to be a nurse i hope this video was like at all helpful for you i want the question of the day today to be something that you either want to say to to nurses in general or something that you have learned as a nurse give us a piece of advice maybe it's a product that you're dying to share that's helped you make your journey easier or maybe it's something that you learned that you carry with you and I'll just share one last piece of advice as a new grad that there are a lot of things that I do not know but there are a lot of little things that I can do right on a daily basis from labeling my tubing to making sure my high touch surface wipe downs get done and so I focus on what I can control what I do know and what I can do and as things come up that I am not as knowledgeable about, I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna take it as a learning experience and not take it personally when maybe it's told to me in not the nicest way. That's my last little tidbit for you guys. I love you so much. Sorry the videos have been a little bit crazy. I love you guys lots. Bye.